The shot I always seem to be going for is falling backwards to reveal something in the foreground. These drones have short lenses, it's a lot easier to work with it and show off the foreground and the background at the same time. This gives you a little bit of movement and there's two things to look at at the same time in the background and then there's something being revealed while you're flying. Just work with these short lenses, don't fly to 399 feet and then just shoot earth. To line up for something like this, you only want to be a couple of feet above whatever you're filming. For me, if it's like a radio tower or something, you kind of have to eyeball this and make sure your drone isn't going to crash into this when you back up. So give it a little bit of runway first so you have some room. You have to fight the instinct to aim down or to adjust when you're backing up over this thing. You moving backwards should be what reveals this in the shot, and it should happen slowly so that the person watching has a reason to keep watching. I'm not even adjusting the gimbal while I do this. I'm flying with no thumbsticks. It gives me better control with the balls of my thumbs because I have Shrek hands, and I don't like those little nipples on the controller. Number two, eagle on the mountain. I've said it before, I'm saying it now, I'll say it again in a future video. This is just a very grabbing shot. Consistently, it's the one that commands the most attention when I'm rolling through on Instagram or Facebook. I always stop to look at these videos because there's constantly new information. You have something in the foreground and the background, so you're working with the short lens. And when you're orbiting something turning like this, it forces perspective on how deep the scenery goes. I don't use the app made feature where you can orbit. It just it doesn't seem consistent to me, and I don't see a reason not to just do it by hand in case I want to adjust more for some reason. You have to give yourself a little bit of time though. For me, a, a shot like this, it takes like 15 seconds total, and half of that I don't use because I, I was missing at the beginning. I'm trying to line up how I'm flying and turning to aim at the same time so that your subject stays right in the middle. Once again, I can only do this because I'm not using the thumbsticks. I'm just using the balls of my thumbs and I, not just um, tripod mode, but also turning down the sensitivity on your drone is important. It's different for every drone and this isn't the video about that, but you do need softer settings to be able to pull this off. Both of these last two shots work with radio towers, mountains, pleasant looking rocks, houses on hills, cliff sides, boats on a lake, boats in the ocean, summoning an eagle to escape the second tower, a skyscraper in your city, the top of a church, an apartment complex with a nice rooftop pool that's lit up at nighttime. Number three, fly away. Do not do a cheesy wave at the drone before you take off when it's about to float back. I know you probably think you're the first person with that idea and it'll be cute, but you are not. This one is tough because you have to know which direction all your scenery is. Once again, this would be impossible on normal rigid default jerky settings. You have to switch to tripod mode and if you can, lower the settings to be softer. One thing I want to note, it's a lot better to be too low to the ground than it is to be too high too fast. You will be happier with the footage too close to the ground than if you took off and rose too quickly and then had to aim down immediately and it's just too much too fast. This is one that's just so easy to mess up, you're going to have to give it a couple of practice runs. In Grindelwald, I had to do this four times and it was frustrating because I only had like 15% battery left so I was really close to not getting this shot right and it's one of my favorite shots. This is also one time that you want to be shooting with the widest view, so if you're shooting with the Mavic 2 Pro, you want to be shooting with the wide view so that you don't use the cropped in view because it's just too hard to aim and you have a big background to show off. In Italy, I did it three times because I kept missing the downward motion to try and fit in the whole city. I kept flying too high right away. So there really is a trick to this. You should float backwards closer to the ground and then curl upwards. Number four, top down has been done. I think what's cooler is dropping off a cliff or a sheer edge. So face down, get into position with room to decide on how fast you want to go and it needs to be slow. Fly slow. We paid a lot of money back in the day to put a big camera on a slider on the ground. It only moved three feet and you could still tell that there was movement. You have a flying 4K stabilized camera. Trust me, you'll be able to see the movement. You also don't have that much room between looking straight at the ground and then this cliff or the drop off. So you want to maximize that as much as you can. It's dumb if you just fly right by at 30 miles an hour. Cliffs at the beach are great for this because you have lots of jagged cliffside to look at and they're usually very rocky. If you're doing an apartment or a skyscraper or something, the drop off is a lot faster. So try to aim for a side that's symmetrical like if there's a park or a courtyard beneath it. Number five, houses on hillsides are a really easy win. It's just such a nice, simple perspective, barely any motion and you have so much going on in the background. But in honor of Kansas and the Netherlands, I'm gonna use a different shot for number five. This one isn't even a technique. Film your downtown at sunset, floating over a rooftop. It is that simple. People will buy your footage. It's not complicated. Students in my course always tell me on the Facebook group that this is the one that just sells the best. I just want to make that point because I think this is more helpful than giving you a, a new angle. I've said in the video about making money, this is super relevant and I promise you, you'll get way more hooked on the likes and attention and shares than you would if you had a really beautiful shot of some hill 
but the hill doesn't belong to anybody, so nobody needs the footage for anything. Hyperlapses are also easy wins. They're my best-selling stock footage, difficult to do, makes you look cool to your mom and friends. Strangely enough, people on Pond5 and stock sites seem to like hyperlapses way more than local people. Local people in my city, marketing companies, PR, whatever, they seem to like regular boring footage as long as it's of my city or downtown or like, you know, the mountain in my city, it's Camelback. Some bonus info, conditions are what I'm obsessively going for now. I don't go crazy for subjects like, oh, I want to get that park downtown. I will stop what I'm doing and change my plans for the evening if I see a really nice pink sunset that's about to happen and I know that there's a ton of clarity and you can see the horizon really well. No matter what I film will look fantastic compared to shooting a good subject on a regular day or like a hazy sunset if I'm in the mountains. I know that I'm going to get lots of layers of mountains against the horizon. Because there's so much haze in the air, it's just a really nice, unique perspective you can get at like 5 p.m. So now I really try to work around the weather, the visibility on the horizon, you know, 10 miles is good. And when I drive around town, I try to pay attention to the conditions. So there's a glass building in my city. I really like it, but I know that it doesn't look great at sunset because the sun sets behind it. A much better time is in the middle of the day when there's fluffy clouds because they're reflected all over the building. So it's gonna look much better. I'll make a note of that. And then whenever I have an extra 15 minutes, I'll stop by and send a drone up. At this point, you can get so much, even with the Mini 2, there really aren't any excuses. And I haven't even got into photography. This is just for video. That's the whole thing I'm done.